grant, we beseech thee, that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm Father Ronald Haft from Our Lady of Divine Providence Family of Parishes. Thank you for listening to Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. 740 WNOP Newport, 910 WPFB Middletown, or get the app, stream, podcast, and more at sacredheartradio.com. Arise, it's a new day. Hear his word, let us pray. The sunrise morning show. Hey, a way to start your day. It is Thursday, the 11th of April, and as we are in the octave of divine mercy, let's pray a prayer by St. Jerome for God's mercy in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. O Lord, show your mercy to me and gladden my heart. I'm like the man on the way to Jericho who was overtaken by robbers, wounded and left for dead. O good Samaritan, come to my aid. I'm like the sheep that went astray. O good shepherd, seek me out and bring me home in accord with your will. Let me dwell in your house all the days of my life and praise you forever and ever with those who are there. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. It is a better way to start a Thursday as we continue through this joyful season of Easter. It's the Sunrise Morning Show, in case you didn't know from the jingle. I'm Matt Swaim, Anna Mitchell has news, Paul Lockman at the controls, and up this hour, I should also mention that Travis has a video feed up and running. You can watch us on Facebook streaming and YouTube streaming in the show notes at sunrisemorningshow.com. But even if you're only listening... You'll still get to hear Father Robert Nixon talk about the virtue of hope, the theological virtue of hope this morning. Dr. Timothy Kearns is teaching a a course on traditional logic for the Institute of Catholic Culture. Uh, Logic sounds like it would be boring, but uh, given how many logical fallacies we are surrounded by on a daily basis, I get the feeling this is going to be a real helpful course. King Craycraft will discuss the common good, going deeper into that question of what it means to really understand what the church says when it tells us about the common good. And then pastoral counselor Kevin Prendergast got a bit of a heavy topic. Uh, We've, of course, been unpacking the Pope's document on human dignity, and gender ideology is in there. So pastoral counselor Kevin Prendergast is going to talk a little bit about what uh, his perspective is and what the church's perspective is on these questions of gender dysphoria. So stay with us if you can. Right now, it's two minutes past. Here's Anna Mitchell with news. Good morning. Former President Trump says he would not sign a national abortion ban into law if elected president. Trump was asked by reporters in Georgia if he would sign a ban if it reached his desk. He called the overturning of Roe v. Wade a, quote, incredible achievement, but says abortion laws should be left up to the states to decide. The Biden campaign and its allies quickly tried to dismiss Trump's comments, pointing to his record on abortion and claiming the former president would threaten access to abortion if reelected. Tornadoes tore through Louisiana and Texas yesterday. One ripped off roofs and took down power lines in Lake Charles, Louisiana, while one in Port Arthur, Texas, damaged homes. The Lake Charles Twister was on the ground for a mile, while the one in Texas carved a two-mile path of destruction. Other reports of tornado damage came in Slidell, Louisiana, and Katy, Texas. High winds, heavy rain, and hail also wreaked havoc across the region. During his general audience yesterday, Pope Francis made appeals for peace amid war, as well as for victims of natural disasters. From Vatican Radio, Linda Bordoni reports. Pope Francis on Wednesday invited the faithful to join him in prayer for tens of thousands of people affected by massive flooding in Central Asia. Invito tutti a pregare per tutti coloro che stanno subendo gli effetti Speaking during the Wednesday general audience, the Pope said, 
I wish to convey to the people of Kazakhstan my spiritual closeness at this time. Even in times of difficulty, he added, we recall the joy of the risen Christ. The Pope's appeal comes as floods engulfed cities and towns across Russia and Kazakhstan on Wednesday after Europe's third longest river burst its bank. Over 110,000 people have been forced to evacuate. The Pope also appealed for prayers for all those suffering from the ongoing wars plaguing the world. In particular, he said, my thoughts go to the tormented Ukraine, Palestine and Israel. And he prayed, may the Lord give us peace. I'm Linda Bordoni. Pope Francis has said a Christian without courage is a useless Christian. He said so as he focused on the virtue of fortitude in his general audience catechesis yesterday, continuing his series on vices and virtues. The Holy Father said that fortitude, quote, strengthens the resolve to resist temptations and to overcome obstacles in the moral life and enables one to conquer fear, even fear of death, and to face trials and persecutions, end quote. A new report shows inflation does not appear to be going away anytime soon. Mark Mayfield reports. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that 12-month price growth accelerated from 3.2% in February to 3.5% in March. The report says items seeing the biggest increase include auto insurance, baby food and formula, and outpatient hospital services. Meanwhile, AAA says the average price for regular gas has gone up about 20 cents a gallon over the past month. Investors reacted negatively to the report, with stocks closing down sharply on Wall Street. I'm Mark Mayfield. And the Philadelphia Eagles and Green Bay Packers will play in the NFL's first-ever regular season game in Brazil. On Wednesday, the league confirmed the Packers will be heading to Sao Paulo after previously announcing the Eagles would be the designated home team for the game. It will be the first time in more than 50 years that an opening week game will be played on a Friday. The game is set for September 6th and will be streamed exclusively on Peacock. Wow. Which So I won't be watching okay, that. Okay, yeah, exactly. This happened to me last year with an Ohio State Buckeyes game. Oh, it's like, hey, everybody check out this game that you have to subscribe to yet another streaming service in order to watch it. I was so mad. I mean, there's just this lack of understanding of the common good. We're going to talk about this with Ken Craycraft. Craycraft. As you know, Anna Mitchell, I do not have cable, even though I produce a cable television show for EWTN. But that's not a big deal because you can stream all EWTN programming for free. For free without a nasty cable subscription. <sighs> but Same the one thing the I do... Same with the Sunrise Morning Show. Can, Sunrise Morning Show, you need for no free. streaming subscriptions. You just turn on the, the switch, turn on the radio. At any rate, I only have one cable subscription. It's uh, one streaming subscription. It's it's uh, MLB. I know. And uh, half the games this year, first of all, the Reds started off playing the Nationals. It was blacked out because I live in the D.C. area. And then there were a couple of games that were like, oh, this is an Apple TV Plus game. I'm like, what? What? They're all just, they're just, it's, 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 they're all just trying to get you. I just want you guys to know, we, we will all, we will always appreciate your listener support of the Sunrise Morning Show, Sacred Heart Radio, EWTN. But we will never charge you. It's voluntary. We will never charge you. We won't. But you can always go to our website, click donate and help. Well, well. Because we, we don't need charge people. people and we do need money. We do need people to donate to keep this going. Absolutely. SunriseMorningShow.com. Excellent. Today is Thursday, April the 11th, and we are happy to have you along with us here on the Sunrise Morning Show on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network, which provides all of its programming for free because of the generous support of so many listeners. So thank you to all of you who are supporters of EWTN, of the Sunrise Morning Show, of your local Catholic radio station. You make it all possible. Father Robert Nixon back with us now on the Sunrise Morning Show. He's a Benedictine monk at New Norcia in Australia, translator of the Tan Resurrection series. And we have been going through 
The Paradise of the Soul by St. Albert the Great. Good morning, Father. It's great to be with you today. It is great to have you. <laughs> and today we will be unpacking St. Albert's reflections on the virtue of hope. How does he define hope? Uh, St. Albert the Great defines hope as true and perfect hope, being the certain expectation of future beatitude. Mm. This expectation springs from the grace of God and is confirmed by preceding merits and good works. So this, this, this hope is actually a kind of certain expectation of the great blessedness and joy and eternal life which God has in store for each one of us. Well, let's um, unpack these two necessary components to have true and perfect hope. First of all, the grace of God. Absolutely. So the grace of God, this means that we don't place our confidence only in our own um, good works or merits or acts of piety. But remember that everything we do, you know, from time to time, it's bound to fall short of what is possible. But we place our hopes in the superabundant grace of God. And he says, for no person may know or presume with certainty that his works are sufficient to please the Lord, since Scripture tells us that all human justice and goodness is but filthy works mm. compared to the perfect and ineffable justice of God. And I think this is so important to remember our own limitations. We can do our best in this life, but at the same time, we need the grace of God to bring it to perfection. And this is, you know, I think is part of the hope that this grace of God will be operative through us. That said, we still have to do some work here. We do. And even though we know that our work will fall short, will probably fall short, um, of what is necessary or what is um, salvation. Yes, we have to give our all to this work. And, you know, our work may, may, may be only 30%, 20%, 40% of the equation, and God's um, grace supplies us with everything we need. But at the same time, you know, we have to be uh, fully applied because fully applying ourselves to this Apply implies our belief, our love of God, our full commitment to do everything we can, even if everything we can is bound to fall short, to know that we give our all and in return, God gives everything we need. Yeah. He writes, those who are infused with the virtue of hope strive always to offer a just sacrifice to God in accordance with the verse of the psalm, Offer a just sacrifice and place your hopes in the Lord. So what is this just sacrifice, Father? So he says that this just sacrifice is, in fact, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, mm. the one who offered himself upon the cross for the atonement of our sins, the one who underwent this unimaginable agony um, and everything which pertains to it, so that we might be freed from our sins. And this um, sacrifice offered upon the altar of the cross is what brings our own small efforts to their perfection, to their completion. And we should bear in mind that this sacrifice of Christ upon the cross is, is present every time that the sacrament of the Eucharist is offered upon the altar. And this is so, I mean, it, it's so funny because I, I don't know that I've ever quite thought about it this way, but but it makes total sense the way that that St. Albert puts it, that that Jesus Christ, like one he quotes St. Augustine in here saying that, you know, one drop of Christ's blood is sufficient for our salvation, and yet he poured out his blood on the cross for us. And so of course we can have sure hope in our salvation through the merits of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. And, you know, um, 
to remember that our, our salvation is due to this wonderful sacrifice which Christ offered upon the cross, which he offered throughout his whole life, in which uh, humanity and divinity were united. And he gave him very self. Now, this doesn't mean that we don't have to do anything. On the contrary, it means that we have to show our faith by offering all that we have, even if all that we have is very small in comparison. But yet uh, it becomes united with this mystical offering of Christ on the cross, this blood by which we are redeemed forever from our sins, from the captivity, from the enslavement of this world. Yeah, and even knowing all of this, it's so easy to, to lose sight of our hope in Christ. And I love that he talks about the fact that that God gives us some aids in this regard, um, including the Holy Eucharist and, and even our guardian angel. Exactly. So, you know, there, there are times when people can despair of their own salvation, when they feel that they are completely submersed in sins, when, um, when it is almost impossible for them to break this cycle of wickedness that we need only to look at the mysteries of Christ, at the Eucharist, at this wonderful sacrifice by which Christ sacrificed his very life for our soul. We consider only our guardian angel, who is also there accompanying us through all these struggles. And we consider most of all the will of God, who actually wills us to be saved, who wishes us to, to, to join in his eternal glory. And all we have to do is... You know, we have to do our very best, but at the same time, our very best is only a small proportion of the situation, that God's grace is the overwhelming thing which leads us to this wonderful and eternal salvation. So, Father, will you close us with some of his prayer for hope? Indeed. O Lord, you promise of your promise of perfect beatitude in the kingdom of heaven is the source and the object of humanity's hope. By hoping in this promise, our trust and faith in you is expressed, and we are sustained upon the journey of life to face all the uncertainties and tribulations of this world. By this holy hope, our joy is sustained, our perseverance in good works is elevated. O Lord, may your, you yourself be my hope as long as I am on earth, just as you shall be the fulfillment of all my hopes in heaven who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We've been talking to Father Robert Nixon about the virtue of hope as laid out by St. Albert the Great in The Paradise of the Soul, which is linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Father, thank you so much. Thank you, Annie, and God bless you, and God bless all your listeners this day. Thank you, Father. You too. All right, it's 17 past now on the Sunrise Morning Show. We're back with headlines right after this. Do you feel as though life is flying past you? Are you desperate for a way to find moments of peace and quiet? Lord, teach me to pray. The free Ignatian Prayer Series will open your heart to His voice, to the peace you're seeking, and the only love that fulfills the human heart, Jesus. God is calling you to true joy, knowing Jesus personally. Lord Teach Me to Pray is free. Just go to lordteachmetopray.com and click on the red box. That's lordteachmetopray.com. For more than 150 years, the Comboni missionaries have traveled to nearly every corner of the world. Founded by St. Daniel Comboni, we are an international Catholic organization dedicated to ministering the world's poorest and most abandoned people. Your donations make a huge impact, and 95% are used to fund our many projects. Find out more at kombonimissionaries.org. That is kombonimissionaries.org. Happy Easter! We're celebrating the resurrection and the Carmelite monks of Wyoming have some special coffee blends in honor of our risen Lord, including Easter sunrise and Pascha Java. And when you purchase Easter-themed beverages through the Mystic Monk Coffee link at sunrisemorningshow.com, we earn a commission. While you're at our site, be sure to check out our online store to get a Sunrise Morning Show mug or travel mug. Grab a mug and link to the Mystic Monks for your Easter coffee at sonrisemorningshow.com. 
The most original and exclusive Catholic content is on EWTN Radio. You know, we talk story with each of our very unique guests for the whole hour so that you can go deep with us as you yourself pursue your own story of heroic virtue and as you pursue intimacy with God. The Bear Wozniak Adventure, Saturday night, 6 Eastern on EWTN Radio. 19 past, here's Anna with headlines. Former President Donald Trump says he would not sign a national abortion ban into law if Congress were to send a bill to his desk if he were elected president. During his general audience yesterday, Pope Francis made appeals for peace amid war as well as for victims of natural disasters. And in his general audience, said a Christian without courage is a useless Christian. Speaking of courage, Anna Mitchell, this time next week, uh, we'll be deep into the story of St. Stephen, the first martyr. And by the end of the week, we'll get into the conversion of St. Paul, who consented to Stephen being stoned. Ooh. So if you're looking for a, a book that maybe gets you into St. Paul's Damascus Road experience, which we'll read about at the end of next week in the Mass, uh, you can check out the book Spiritual Lightning, Answering Your Call from Jesus to Master His Values. It's available now at EWTNRC.com. Deacon Richard Eason looks at St. Paul's Spiritual Lightning experience Oof. and how we can get into it ourselves. Nice. I'm Father Rob Jack. Join me this afternoon for Driving Home to Faith where Michael Vanderberg will give us the latest news from Dayton, St. Vincent Paul. Dr. Ken Craycraft will begin a new series on his book, Citizens Yet Strangers. I'll continue my explanation of the church's new document on human dignity plus frequent traffic and weather. That's this afternoon beginning at 4 on Sacred Heart Radio. You're on the road to Christ the King. Driving home. Support is from Solidarity HealthShare. Is inflation making you feel frustrated and out of control when it comes to your expenses? We have a solution. It's Solidarity HealthShare. With Solidarity HealthShare, you control what doctors you go to and how much you spend with pricing options that start as low as $384 for families. Take control of your health care and your budget with Solidarity HealthShare. 855-954-5688. Solidarity HealthShare. 855-954-5688. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Hoding Realtors. The trusted professionals at Hoting Realtors have been serving neighbors, family, and friends in the tri-state Catholic communities for over 30 years. 513-451-4800 and at Hoting.com. Support for Sacred Art Radio is from Stegman Landscape. Serving the tri-state since 1979, Stegman Landscape can create a picture-perfect landscape all year long. From design, installation, and maintenance to retaining walls, patios, and outdoor fireplaces to enjoy any season, Stegman Landscape landscape can do it all. Stegman Landscape, making the world more beautiful one yard at a time. 859-781-1562 and online at stegmanlandscape.com. Dayton Right to Life Foundation, proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio, presents their fundraiser, Speak Out for Life, an evening with college football All-American and motivational pro-life speaker Mark Howe. Tuesday, April 30th. Register online at daytonlife.org. That's daytonlife.org. The Sunrise Morning Show continues on this April the 11th. I'm Matt Swaim, joined now by Dr. Timothy Kearns, who has an extensive CV, but among his other roles, he is Secretary for the Society for Medieval Logic and Metaphysics, so it only makes sense that he be the guy to teach a course that's coming up with the Institute of Catholic Culture Tuesday nights starting April 23rd, and it's called, well, it's basically all in traditional logic. So, Dr. Kearns, welcome. Thank you for having me. So when we talk about logic, how do we understand it beyond purely like a mathematical or Dr. Spock kind of sense? Like how would the medievals have understood what, we're, what we really mean when we talk about the idea of logic? That's a good question. You know, and I think that's a place we often don't really start. You know, we don't start by asking ourselves, what, what is this subject we're about to study? You know, I, I'm it seems like that would be a logical place to start, though, right? It, it would be a, a logical place to start. That's right. Um, and so we, we kind of need to know what that is. And I, I think the, the simplest way to describe what logic is, is logic is the study of reasoning itself. It's the art of coming to know things. So it's, I, I, I break it down for people like this. 
you know, when you're, you might do exercise for something or you might try to, you know, get good at cooking or, you know, those kinds of things. Well, wouldn't you want to get good at the skill behind all of them, which is reasoning? And I think most people would say the answer to that is yeah. Well, and I think, too, uh, there's this illusion that people know logic because they've looked up a list of logical fallacies as a way to put people in their place and win internet arguments. <laughs> right? sure. I mean, this is no, this is whole true. culture of things. So, for instance, if I say, I don't trust this guy, he's a jerk, people might say, well, that's an ad hominem logical fallacy. Uh, and it might be on some level, but mm -hmm. it's also probably logical to not trust somebody who is a jerk, uh, historically speaking. So when it comes to this question of, like, spotting what is logically sound and what is logically fallacious, I mean... Don't you think it takes a little bit more effort than Googling logical fallacies on the Internet? Yeah, definitely. And I think um, <clears throat> one of the most important things really is, is listening to what the other person is really saying and trying to understand them on their own terms. Okay, we may not accept those terms. Those terms may, in fact, be upsetting even. But we need to understand what they're really saying and where they're coming from. Um, you know, sometimes we, we say in politics or religion nowadays, you know, you, in arguments about those subjects, you might say something like, well, you know, all the people who kind of are on the other side, you know, they have all these difficulties and whatnot. But I think when you really start looking at it, you see that, that most people's arguments are actually fairly decent. The problem is just with the assumptions and the fact that most people can't really justify the assumptions they make. And when you question those assumptions, they immediately get upset. There, there's really no way to have a, a serious or productive conversation with them. So logic is not just the art of, of sort of if A, then B, A, therefore B, but logic is also the art of saying, okay, I, I don't agree with what you're saying, but why do you say this? What does this really mean? You know, kind of the back and forth of a, of a good discussion. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is very important. You know, there may be somebody listening right now uh, who is mm -hmm. saying, well, this real rich – uh, you know, you Catholics talking about the idea of logic, you believe, you have a blind faith in an invisible deity, right? And, you know, there are uh, versions of Christianity that do uh, play up faith uh, almost to the exclusion of reason, but Catholicism is not, right? So Catholicism That's really right. does care about logic. So how does that supposed to, how's that supposed to work in a, you know, worldview that also has the concept of faith? It's a great question, you know, and I think this kind of takes us to the heart, really, of why, why we're doing all the, all the things we're doing here, you know, in general at the ICC. The reason is, is that we have these basic capacities and these gifts and these inclinations that are given to us by, just by what we are, you know, just like any animal. You know, lions like to hunt and, and chickens like to go peep and, um, you know, things like that. So we, we have our own inclinations and desires, and the highest of those is, of course, our ability to understand things. And um, what we therefore aim to do is to try to understand everything, the whole universe to some degree. Uh, but we can't do that because we, we don't know the beginnings of it. We don't necessarily know the principles. And so um, faith comes in in that God reveals himself to us. And in revealing himself to us, he also reveals fundamental truths about the, the nature of reality, about how things work and um, how we, of course, how, how we can be saved and uh, all those kinds of questions, but also just at a more general level, he reveals his face, if you will, in, in the natural world. And, and once we receive the gift of faith, then it's also true that we find God's face even more clearly in all the things that we see and that we experience. Um, so I, I think what people will experience is, is both logic as learning the art of reasoning and kind of uh, a little bit of, of uh, argumentative fencing, if you will, but then also discovering the logos himself behind all the things that we see and in all of the activities that we undertake and, you know, even the, the people maybe that we disagree with, coming to understand them better and therefore see what maybe they're trying to, uh, to really get at in the end. Yeah, and, and also to understand how logic plays into virtue, how virtue is logical, and mm, how sure. the logic of virtue leads to happiness. I mean, what's more logical? What the world tells me, you know, or what the church is, is calling me to? Is it more logical to try and live a life of virtue and create a better culture of happiness in my own household with my spouse and my, my offspring? Or mm -hmm. is it more logical to drink 10 beers and try and go to work tomorrow morning? I can tell you which messages are out there and which one is actually going to lead the human flourishing. Right? 
No, it's and, true. It's true. And that's 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 part of what the church is trying to call. So it's it's logical to follow what Christ has laid out for us. But I encourage people, this sounds like it'd be a really fascinating course. You can go to instituteofcatholicculture.org. It's under the events, the traditional logic course. Dr. Timothy Kearns is teaching it. Thanks for spending a little time with us this morning. I hope you get a lot of people signing up for the course. Great, me too. Thanks for your, uh, for your time. And this course, by the way, like all Institute of Catholic Cultures courses, is free. And as Paul Lockman would tell you, if it's free, give me three. So you and a couple friends, go sign up. Institute of Catholic Culture.org. It's linked at sunrise morning show.com. Half past the hour, here's Anna with news. Good morning. Former President Trump says he would not sign a national abortion ban into law if elected president. Trump was asked by reporters in Georgia if he would sign a ban if Congress sent one to his desk. Trump said the overturning of Roe v. Wade was an incredible achievement, but said abortion laws should be left up to the states to decide. The Biden campaign and its allies, who have stated they believe their policy to expand abortion nationwide is a winning issue, quickly attempted to dismiss Trump's comments. And in fact, President Biden told voters after the recent ruling by the Arizona Supreme Court that Americans should vote for him in November if they want to protect access to abortion. In other news, tornadoes tore through Louisiana and Texas yesterday. One ripped off roofs and took down power lines in Lake Charles, Louisiana, while one in Port Arthur, Texas, damaged homes. The Lake Charles twister was on the ground for a mile, while the one in Texas carved a two-mile path of destruction. Pope Francis asked the faithful to pray for victims of natural disasters yesterday, particularly for the people of Kazakhstan who have been suffering from massive flooding lately. He said, I invite everyone to pray for all who are suffering the effects of this natural disaster. The Holy Father during his general audience also repeated his appeals for peace in the Holy Land as well as for Ukraine and Myanmar saying, let us ask the Lord for peace and not forget these brothers and sisters of ours who suffer so much in these places of war. During his catechesis at the general audience, the Holy Father reflected on the virtue of fortitude, saying a Christian without courage is a useless Christian. From Vatican Radio, Deborah Castellano-Luboff reports. May the Lord and the saints' examples inspire us to rediscover fortitude. Pope Francis gave this encouragement during his weekly general audience on Wednesday in St. Peter's Square, saying that the virtue, with God's grace, will help us in our day-to-day efforts. The Catechism describes the cardinal virtue of fortitude La fortezza. as the moral virtue that ensures firmness in difficulties and constancy in the pursuit of good. The Pope highlighted how the virtue can strengthen our resolve to resist temptations and to overcome obstacles. He said it enables one to conquer fear, even fear of death, and to face trials. A Christian without courage who does not turn his own strength to good, who does not bother anyone, Pope Francis said, is a useless Christian. The Pope addressed when fortitude is directed within ourselves. Most of the fears that arise within us, he observed, are unrealistic and do not end up happening anyway. It is better, then, he said, to invoke the Holy Spirit and face everything with patient fortitude, one problem at a time. The Pope said to the faithful, we are not alone. The Lord is with us. If we trust in him and sincerely seek the good, he reassured, then in every situation we can count on God's providence to shield and armor us. The Pope then pointed out the second, more active nature of fortitude. As well as internal trials, the Pope said there are external enemies, which he said are the trials of life, persecutions, and difficulties that we did not expect or that surprise us. Fortitude, he said, is a fundamental virtue because it takes the challenge of evil in the world seriously and makes us react and cry out an emphatic no to all of this. I'm Deborah Castellano-Lubov. A new report shows inflation is not going away anytime soon. Mark Mayfield reports. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that 12-month price growth accelerated from 3.2% in February to 3.5% in March. The report says items seeing the biggest increase include auto insurance, baby food and formula, and outpatient hospital services. 
Meanwhile, AAA says the average price for regular gas has gone up about 20 cents a gallon over the past month. Investors reacted negatively to the report, with stocks closing down sharply on Wall Street. I'm Mark Mayfield. Families and community members are remembering the victims of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse. A vigil was held at Sacred Heart of Jesus Church in Baltimore this week. Participants walked around the neighborhood holding candles and stopping six times, one for each victim, to say a prayer in their memory. The Archdiocese of Baltimore has raised more than $47,000 through a relief fund. That's the news. It's 35 past the hour. The Dr. Ken Craycraft will sign copies of his new book, Citizens Yet Strangers, at Mount St. Mary Seminary and School of Theology, Tuesday, April 16th at 7 p.m. in the Bartlett Center. For more information, visit sacredheartradio.com slash events. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Schneller Knockelman Plumbing, Heating, and Air. Water heaters, plumbing repair, and drain cleaning backed by Schneller Knockelman's 100% satisfaction guarantee. Schneller Knockelman at skpha.com. skpha.com. Support is from Solidarity Health Share. Is inflation making you feel frustrated and out of control when it comes to your expenses? We have a solution. It's Solidarity Health Share. With Solidarity Health Share, you control what doctors you go to and how much you spend with pricing options that start as low as $384 for families. Take control of your health care and your budget with Solidarity Health Share. 855 954 5688. Solidarity Health Share. 855 954 5688. It's 24 minutes before the hour on this Thursday, April the 11th. Your forecast is brought to you on Sacred Heart Catholic Radio by Schneller Knockelman Plumbing, Heating, and Air online at skpha.com. More rain today, but warm. Right now, temperatures in the upper 50s as you're heading out the door. For Cincinnati, rain likely today with thunderstorms possible and a high of 65 degrees. Showers tonight and an overnight low of 47 More rain again tomorrow and a high of 55 degrees. For the Miami Valley Dayton area, rain this morning with thunderstorms developing this afternoon. A high around 67 degrees. Showers early, then cloudy overnight with a low of 47. Rain showers again tomorrow with increasing winds in the afternoon and a high tomorrow of 54 degrees. This is Sacred Heart Catholic Radio, 740 a.m., 910 a.m. Download our app at sacredheartradio.com. It's 37 minutes past the hour, and you're listening to the Sunrise Morning Show on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Sunrise Morning Show legal and political analyst Ken Craycraft is back with us now. He's a professor at Mount St. Mary's Seminary and author of Citizens Yet Strangers, Living Authentically Catholic in a Divided America. Ken, welcome back. Thank you, Annie. Good morning. Good to be with you. It is good to have you. And uh, we're continuing our path of destruction, uh, demolishing the the liberal ideas that, that shape how we think about the ordering of society, particularly as Americans. And there is an infamous passage in Justice Anthony Kennedy's opinion in Planned Parenthood v. Casey that will serve as our punching bag today, um, rightfully so. <laughs> Give us the gist of what he said. Yes. Yes. Well, it's yeah, in Planned Parenthood versus Casey, Justice Anthony Kennedy, a professed Catholic, uh, wrote the uh, it was a plurality opinion, but it was the opinion that uh, that contained the law that uh, applied. Um, he, he had this very famous passage in which he, um, it, which you know, is sometimes called the mystery passage. Justice uh, Scalia, the late Justice Scalia, had a great deal of fun uh, making fun of the passage uh, because it's just so patently silly. But but this is what uh, Anthony Kennedy said in a Supreme Court decision. These matters, and of course the matters were abortion, these matters involving the most intimate and personal choices a person may make in a lifetime, choices central to personal dignity and autonomy, are central to the liberty protected by the 14th Amendment. And then he says this, and this is the, this is the passage, the heart of liberty passage. He says, quote, at the heart of liberty is the right to define one's own concept of existence 
of meaning of the universe and of the mystery of human life. Wow. Unquote. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, what he's doing in the. Uh, Go ahead, Annie. Well, ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, before we before we like really parse this out, it sounds so ridiculous. And yet this is I mean, this is this is what we live with now. This is the water we drink, in a sense. That that is exactly right. And that's exactly the way to put it. This is because what Kennedy does here is he says it, it, the, the phrase works to do two things. First of all, it, it, it summarizes how uh, Amer what um, what the what the uh, philosophy of freedom undergirding the American foundation is. And it uh, it helps to uh, and effectively does through a Supreme Court decision propagate and advance that theory of freedom and it's a theory of freedom and and this is this this Annie this really goes I'm glad we're talking about this so early because this really goes to the heart of the book because the 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 if there's a central thesis of the book or, or maybe it may be better a central theme it's that we Catholics have forgotten how to speak Catholic and we speak a language of either secular liberalism or liberal Protestantism and we don't realize it and Justice Anthony Kennedy epitomizes exactly that. But the language that he uses, while we might uh, scoff at it, it, it actually is the language that is used or the ideas that are used and embraced by many Catholics. The right to define on one existence is what uh, the, is at the heart of liberty. Mm -hmm. This is not a Catholic definition of liberty by any stretch of the imagination. And it isn't even remotely similar to anything that the, the, the Catholic Church teaches or believes about what freedom actually is and what freedom is for. Well, tell us what, what? is what is so, the definition of I mean, what what should exactly. we be thinking when we think about liberty? Yeah. So there's two there's two things behind Justice Kennedy's definition of liberty that are faulty. The first is that uh, that the end of morality is the freedom to make a choice with no conception of what the choice is. So in other words, freedom, morale, the moral choice is reduced to how relatively free it is. So in other words, the only, what, the only judgment that you make about a, a person's autonomous choice is how free of constraint it was. Mm -hmm. If it's free from constraint, it's a moral choice, regardless of what the object of the choice is. And what he says can mean nothing other than that, because the choice is to, quote, define one's existence, unquote. So that's the first mistake, is that morality, the, mo the morality of a choice, is reduced to its relative freedom. The second is that it, it uh, doesn't understand that the purpose of, of free action is to choose the good, is to choose an action that is in conformity with the good. And this can be summarized uh, by what I say repeatedly in the book and, 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 and as another central theme, this is summarized in the concept of individual possessive autonomous rights. You note he also uses the word autonomy. And again, Catholics love to use the word autonomy in talking about their ability to make choices. But the fact is, uh, moral choices are not autonomous. Autonomy means self-rule. So if to, so what, when we use the word autonomy, what we're really saying not, is not simply that we have moral agency, that we have the liberty or the freedom to choose between X and Y, but rather that we make the rule over what uh, is the proper choice, whether X or Y, and that it doesn't make any difference <clears throat> from any kind of objective standpoint, only that we're free to make it. This, and again, this is, this is something that, that, that many Christians in America, including many Catholics, buy into uh, but again, it's not a Catholic understanding of what it means to be free and what it means to to make to make a choice. Um, and, and also, Annie, and this is uh, it, it also Justice Kennedy's um, passage and the way that we use freedom and liberty and autonomy. It also uh, serves to propagate this notion that liberalism, classical liberalism, and again, we mean from that by that we mean the uh, the, the uh, political theory at the heart of the founding is merely a procedural set of, uh, of uh, or a set of procedures rather than instituting a substantive view of the human person. See, what Justice Kennedy is doing here is he's saying that the, this, this view of the human person, this autonomous person who defines one's own concept of existence, that's the substantive view of the person that is at, is at the heart of the founding of, the American, of American principles of liberty. 
So in other words, it's not simply a set of procedures by which people are free to pursue their own goods. It is that. But that set of procedures by which people are free to choose their own goods itself assumes a certain version of moral anthropology. And that is this non-Catholic uh, notion that one is free to define one's own existence and that the moral choice is only measured by how free you are to make it, not by the object that you choose when you exercise your freedom. And, and that, that collapse uh, of free of morality into freedom or to contrary choice uh, is is at is at the heart of Catholic dissent, but even Catholics who don't dissent still use this moral reasoning. It's just that most of the time, what we happen to agree with, what what the Church teaches, is what we just happen to serendipitously agree with. We don't believe it because the Church teaches it, but rather because we've reached that conclusion ourselves. And if the Church teaches something different from what we believe, then we exercise our autonomous right to define our own existence. And, and we see this across the board, not just in, in what conservatives call liberal Catholics or what liberal Catholics call conservative Catholics, but across the board. Yeah. And that's the thing that we need to start disabusing ourselves of. Well, this is where we start running into problems with the idea of religious liberty. Like, okay, fine, do whatever you want as long as you let me practice my religion. Well, that becomes problematic because that that leads us to this religious indifferentism, right? That that and and this yes. is where it starts becoming a a foreign concept to us as American Catholics particularly is to think, a really wait a minute, the government is going to lead us to God? That doesn't sound right at all. That's a really great example, Annie. That's a really great example. Good politics is politics that produces good people. It isn't a politics that assumes that people will be good. And that's exactly the opposite. You know, uh, Hamilton famously said that the, the, the Constitution requires uh, moral people. That's, a, that's not a proper view of what government should do. Government should assist people in being good. It shouldn't assume that they will be good. And that's exactly – And but, but unfortunately, what, what also is, goes hand in hand with that is the good – is whatever I conceive the good to be through, as Justice Kennedy said, the right to define my own existence uh, and meaning of the universe and so forth. And yeah. so that 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 corruptive understanding of freedom uh, has uh, infected all of us. And that's why I begin the, chap the first chapter by saying that we are all liberal Protestants. It's too bad. I wish that this would work, you know, in, in some way, shape, or form, but it just simply doesn't. And we're going to have to leave it there for time, but uh, look forward to picking it up the next time. In the meantime, you can find Citizens Yet Strangers from our Sunday Visitor linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Ken signing books here in the Cincinnati area tonight at St. Gertrude in Madeira. So go see him there. Seven o'clock, right, Ken? That's correct. Thanks, Annie. You bet. All right. We are back right after this with our Catholic counselor, Kevin Prendergast. Stay with us. Support for the Sunrise Morning Show is from Visiting Angels. Visiting Angels provides experienced, compassionate care to millions of aging adults nationwide by keeping them safe and healthy in the comfort of their own home. Whether it's a short break for caregivers or for long-term assistance, Visiting Angels provides hygiene, meals, light housework, companionship, and more. And services are available up to 24 hours per day. Visiting Angels, online at visitingangels.com. That's visitingangels.com. Franchise opportunities available. Are you looking for peace? Longing for joy? Want to meet the giver of all goodness? God is calling the laity to bring Ignatian prayer into a suffering world. Work for the new evangelization. Go to lordteachmetopray.com. Order your free digital training and manual. Find true happiness and everlasting joy. Go to LordTeachMeToPray.com and click on the red button today. It's free. Approved by the USCCB. Business owners are starting to think outside the box to find new customers. You can reach millions of engaged Catholic listeners by underwriting The Sunrise Morning Show. Each weekday morning, listeners across the U.S. and around the globe can hear your message for your business, ministry, or nonprofit on The Sunrise Morning Show. To find out how it works, email me, Leah, at sacredheartradio.com. That's Leah at sacredheartradio.com. Hi, this is Father Mike Schmitz. Please join me for Ascension's Bible in a Year and Catechism in a Year here on EWTN Radio. 
We're going through the entire Bible and the Catechism in 365 days. If you've ever wanted to understand what it means to be Catholic and allow those truths to shape your life, this is for you. Bible in a year and Catechism in a year with Father Mike Schmitz tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific on EWTN Radio. Have you had any embarrassing moments? That's later on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie on most of these EWTN stations. Now back to the Sunrise Morning Show with Anna Mitchell and Matt Swaim. I had any embarrassing moments, Jerry and Debbie. Yes, only about 12 times an hour on this show. The Sunrise Morning Show continues. I'm Matt Swaim. Joined now by pastoral counselor Kevin Prendergast, and uh, he's a licensed counselor with decades of experience in the classroom and in private practice. Kevin, good morning. Hey, great to be with you, Matt. Yeah, I've been looking forward all week to uh, talking to you about the Human Dignity Document from the Vatican. Mm -hmm. It covers so much ground, including uh, ground on gender theory and uh, and gender transitions and all these kinds of things that— um, that are real hot button issues, and and to preface this, uh, and I know you feel this way as well. I have one way of thinking about gender theory when it hits the agenda level and the policy level and the advertising and marketing level. I have a mm -hmm. very different way of talking about it when it's my friend who's struggling, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So, right. <clears throat> how does that help us maybe understand where the church is trying to land on these things and what the conversation is? Yeah, great. So in this this new document, Dignitas Infinita, this infinite dignity of the human person. So most of the, you know, there's a small part of the document that's about this gender theory. Uh, a lot of it is just gets to basic church tradition, teaching, and natural law. And and your point is good, Matt, that all of us either work with or know someone who has same-sex attraction, or we know families where someone has gone through a gender transition, we, we work with people. And so, you know, the, the document just keeps going back that we're all, each of us is a children of God. And I think that's important. One of the lines that from the part that talks about gender theory is uh, discrimination or any form of bullying, aggression, exclusion, or violence are not consistent with our Catholic faith, right? Yeah, and that's actually that's, reflective almost word for word for what the Catechism says about people. Yeah, with exactly. Attraction. Yeah, so what I want to say is that there's a there's a dominant narrative in psychology and medicine in the United States, which actually is becoming more of a minority opinion worldwide, and I want to talk about why that is. And that another way that I think the document does a great job from natural law and from Catholic theology of approaching this issue, part of natural law, an extension of that would be, what can we learn from the psychological sciences? So there's a dominant narrative for, you know, for example, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Psychological Association, some of the big groups, the National Association of uh, Social Workers have all come out affirm, you know, with this uh, really backing affirmative care, which, you know, gets into um, moving quickly to transition, right? But I think, and you know, the other point that we need to make here, we can't use psychology like as a hammer to back up our Catholic faith. So uh, psychology doesn't, science doesn't work like that. So we have hypotheses that have to be proven. We have to have evidence. And I think up until recently, people have been taking a, a small sample and saying that this applies to all kids. And we have to be careful on the other side that yeah. there's some contradictory studies coming out. And I want to hit a couple of those points. Yeah, uh, and the, might... the other thing, too, mm -hmm. that, that, yeah. that, um, that I think this highlights is it, this has all <clears throat> happened so fast. Very quickly. That there's yep. just not a, there's not, that there isn't data to talk about what things look like 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years down the road on these questions. Yeah, but, but we have a couple of things. So 30, 40 years ago, uh, the people who were going, you know, through a gender transition were almost all male who were transitioning to female. And in the last 30, you know, in the last 10 years, five or 10 years, that has swung. So most of the people that are trying to do the transition are adolescent females uh, trying, to, trying to become males, and that's just exploded. And we don't see that like other medical entities, conditions, or psychological. There's not this like 200% increase in five years like we, we've seen here. So here are a couple of the studies that just raise questions. And I think when we're talking with someone who has, is very dug into their position on gender transition, we can just say, well, what about this? This kind of raises some questions. How would you, and then get curious, how would you 
fit this into your theory. So I think that's a better approach. So one, um, there's a number of countries and most of the countries in Europe who were way ahead of, of the United States in gender transition. For example, England, Sweden, the Netherlands have all put the brakes on in the last couple of, just in the last two or three years. So the National Health Service in Great Britain had a big uh, study that was very well done. Uh, they closed this Tavistock Center in London, which had been doing transition surgeries for the last 35 years, and basically said that uh, this model of care is, is really has a lot of considerable risk for poor mental health and distress, especially of minors. So a lot of what we're talking about here is you know, doing this with minors. Uh, another study in Sweden that just came out is talks about the uncertain state of knowledge calls for caution. We don't have enough evidence uh, to back up hormone, hormone therapy and surgeries. Uh, and one of the big findings that came out of, of these big studies is that uh, a lot of programs that do the gender transition are skipping over any kind of really thorough psychological assessment. So the question that's out there for science and psychology is, well, what else is going on? Is there some other comorbid condition? Is there some psychological like depression, body dysmorphic disorder, autism? There's a, a large number of kids who are autistic who are thinking that they're, uh, they should be in a different body. And so we say, well, maybe it would be better. Let's start. And that's what, what we're moving toward, especially in Europe, is let's do way more psychological assessment. Let's just talk with this young person, try to figure out why are they so distressed. And I think social media plays in this as well, that a lot of uh, researchers are saying, well, if a young 14-year-old girl is feeling miserable, which is very common, and then they go on social media and they get the message that the reason that you're miserable is that you were born in the wrong body, you know, and then they, they get support for that. So so I think those things, just to look at that, it, the final study, Matt, one from Netherlands, a 15-year study, is that after 15 years, about three quarters of the kids that uh, thought they were uh you know, wanted to be in a different body, different gender, had kind of grown out of that. But then there was still a quarter of about 25% that did not. So that's where our Catholic compassion has to come in, that we deal with people that, you know, for whatever reason, like same-sex attraction, they just have this and they have to carry that cross. And we need to support them and not condemn them. They are brothers and sisters in Christ uh, mm -hmm. in need of God's mercy and understanding and love and community. And yep. it's, a, it's a much longer conversation to be had about this, but thank you, Kevin Prendergast. Have a wonderful yep. day. Thanks, Matt. Take care. All right, back with another full hour after the break. It's 3 Till. Not to believe is to live without hope. Ah, but at Sacred Heart Radio, we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and through His life, death, and resurrection has saved us from our sins and given us a pathway to eternal life in heaven. And broadcasting this good news is the mission of Sacred Heart Radio. So to join in this mission of hope, please visit sacredheartradio.com and click donate and then tell everyone about Sacred Heart Radio and the Sacred Heart Radio app. Why wait in endless lines at the pharmacy when Brozard Pharmacy, a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio, can fill your prescriptions in a timely manner with high quality. Brozard Pharmacy, fast, friendly service without the wait at brosartpharmacy.com. At times, life is overwhelming, making it hard to find peace and know God's love. Take a step out of life's busyness and into God's presence for an eight-day personally directed retreat at the Jesuit Spiritual Center. Enter into silence to pray, reflect, and rest. Daily conversations with the spiritual director invite you to explore your own story and connect it to the life of Christ. For more information or to register, call 513-248-3500. That's 513-248-3500. Gate of Heaven Catholic Cemetery of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati wishes you a joyful Easter season. Gate of Heaven Cemetery can help you learn more about the importance of the Catholic funeral rites during their pre-planning seminar. Tuesday, April 23rd at 11 a.m., 2 p.m., and 6 p.m. Find out why the decision to be in a Catholic cemetery is so important to you and your family. Gate of Heaven, 513-489-0300 and at gateofheaven.org. I'm Bill Torbeck of Tri-State Abrasive and Tool Company, proud to support Sacred Heart Radio. Diamond and CBN are the most advanced cutting tools because they are the hardest materials known. These enable you to machine three to eight times faster compared to carbide while reducing downtime for tool changes by 90%. 
improve your productivity when machining hard, cast, and powdered metals or difficult to machine materials. Find out more at theabrasiveone.com. That's the number one, theabrasiveone.com. You rely on your car, so rely on the experts at Fort Mitchell Garage, a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio. They can do it all from brakes, tires, and heating and cooling to towing and collision repair and more. Fort Mitchell Garage on Dixie Highway in Park Hills. On the web at fortmitchellgarage.com. Support is from Catholic Order of Foresters Life Insurance, where you can now make a one-time payment and choose between term and permanent coverage. Agent Rick Nicholas can help. 513-367-0700 to learn more. 513-367-0700. I am Father Rufino Ezama, the Provincial Superior of the Comboni Missionaries. Thank you for listening to Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. 740 WNOP Newport, 910 WPFB Middletown, or get the app, stream, podcast, and more at sacredheartradio.com. Arise, it's a new day. Hear his word, let us pray. The sunrise morning show It is Thursday, the 11th of April. Let's begin together in prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, because of your love, give us life. For those who serve the gospel with courage, strengthen them in faith and joy. For those who live the gospel with fidelity, grant them perseverance in the face of hardship. For those who have died in your service, raise them up to fullness of life. God of all good, you call men and women in every age to serve the gospel in the face of persecution from the powerful. Grant all believers a share in their courage. Grant them the reward of their labors. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. It is a better way to start a Thursday morning, the Sunrise Morning Show. We are glad to be hanging out with you on your local Catholic Radio affiliate with the help of the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Maybe you're listening on an app. Maybe you're listening on uh, sunrisemorningshow.com. However you happen to be getting here, we're glad to speak with you. I'm Matt Swaim. Anna Mitchell has news. Paul Lockman has control of the microphones, which is a terrifying thought. Travis has got a video feed up and running. You can check that out on the show notes at sunrisemorningshow.com. We'll talk this hour to Dr. John Bergsma. We're uh, continuing to discuss marriage as an image of salvation in the scriptures. Rita Heikenfeld will be along for Bible Foods, Gary Machuda as well. And as we continue our series through A Catholic Guide to the Old Testament from Ascension Press, Dr. Jeffrey Morrow from Seton Hall is going to look at the book of Obadiah, which uh, a lot of people kind of skip over, but there's some meaty stuff in there. So... Stay with us if you can. Right now, it is two minutes past. News of service of Central Fabricators and centralfabricators.com. Here's Anna Mitchell. Good morning. Former President Donald Trump has said he would not sign a national abortion ban into law if elected president. Trump was asked by reporters in Georgia if he would sign a ban if Congress sent one to his desk. He did say that the overturning of Roe v. Wade was an incredible achievement, but said he believes abortion laws should be left up to the states to decide. The Biden campaign and its allies, who have stated they believe their policy to expand abortion nationwide will be a winning issue in November, quickly attempted to dismiss Trump's comments and say that voters should support President Biden if they want to protect abortion rights. Tornadoes tore through Louisiana and Texas yesterday. One ripped off roofs and took down power lines in Lake Charles, Louisiana, while one in Port Arthur, Texas, damaged homes as well. The Lake Charles twister was on the ground for a mile, while the one in Texas carved a two-mile path of destruction. Meanwhile, a storm system is expected to bring severe weather today to parts of the southeast in the Ohio River Valley. A risk of high wind and isolated tornadoes will stretch From the South Carolina-Georgia line down into Florida, the risk of tornadoes will be greater in eastern Ohio, West Virginia, and into parts of Pennsylvania. Heavy rain is expected in the region where water levels are already elevated. During his general audience yesterday, Pope Francis made appeals for peace amid war as well as for victims of natural disasters. 
From Vatican Radio, Linda Bordoni reports. Pope Francis on Wednesday invited the faithful to join him in prayer for tens of thousands of people affected by massive flooding in Central Asia. Invito tutti a pregare per tutti coloro che stanno subendo gli effetti di questo disastro naturale. Speaking during the Wednesday general audience, the Pope said, I wish to convey to the people of Kazakhstan my spiritual closeness at this time. al popolo di Kazakhstan la mia vicinanza spirituale in questo momento. Even in times of difficulty, he added, we recall the joy of the risen Christ. Anche nei momenti di difficoltà ricordiamo la gioia di Cristo risorto. The Pope's appeal comes as floods engulf cities and towns across Russia and Kazakhstan on Wednesday after Europe's third longest river burst its bank. Over 110,000 people have been forced to evacuate. The Pope also appealed for prayers for all those suffering from the ongoing wars plaguing the world. In particular, he said, my thoughts go to the tormented Ukraine, Palestine and Israel. And he prayed, may the Lord give us peace. I'm Linda Bordoni. Pope Francis said a Christian without courage is a useless Christian. He said so as he focused on the virtue of fortitude during his general audience catechesis yesterday, continuing his series on vices and virtues. The Holy Father said fortitude, quote, strengthens the resolve to resist temptations and to overcome obstacles in the moral life and enables one to conquer fear, even fear of death, and to face trials and persecutions. Rent prices are up for a third straight month. According to the real estate company Redfin, they're also up 0.8% from last year. Median rent as of March is at $1,987. Rents had cooled in the previous three-month period, but they're now beginning to rise again along with inflation. In fact, a new report shows inflation is not going away anytime soon. Mark Mayfield reports. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that 12-month price growth accelerated from 3.2% in February to 3.5% in March. The report says items seeing the biggest increase include auto insurance, baby food and formula, and outpatient hospital services. Meanwhile, AAA says the average price for regular gas has gone up about 20 cents a gallon over the past month. Investors reacted negatively to the report, with stocks closing down sharply on Wall Street. I'm Mark Mayfield. And weather is delaying this morning's start of the Masters. The Augusta National Golf Club says the first round will not begin until at least 9 a.m. Eastern when the action does get underway. John Rahm will be looking to add another green jacket to his closet in a list of accolades as he defends his title. Tiger Woods is also making a return to the event and is hoping to break his tie with Sam Snead for most tour championships. Okay, so rain delay. We're in a rain delay. Hello, friends. Let's be good for the azaleas. Yeah. At the yeah. Amen Corner. Amen Corner's got to You know where be. the actual Amen Corner is? It's actually probably on somewhere here on Catholic Radio. Uh, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't have a lot to say about golf. You don't the golf. have a lot to say about golf? I, I mean, I'm trying I'm trying real hard to come up with some golf stuff. Uh, just puttering along here. I don't know. I got nothing, Anna Mitchell. I got nothing. That was nothing terrible. That wasn't even golf. close to making me laugh. Yeah, and it, I'm not, it's not going to work along. on golf. News, weather, sports, and more. You whiffed. Sorry about sports this morning. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay, Matt. You put yeah. it up to me, and I couldn't. I just couldn't tee off on it. Today is Thursday, April the 11th. Happy to have you along with us here on the Sunrise Morning Show on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Thanks for sticking with us amid Matt's terrible puns. Dr. John Berksma back with us now on the Sunrise Morning Show. We've been going through his book, Love Basics for Catholics. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, Anna. So we are continuing to glean lessons for our marriages today from the scriptures that we've been studying in this book. And today we're talking about the Song of Songs. Now, we like to look to this book for some really great Catholic pickup line ideas. I mean, your neck is like a Tower of David is so good. But how is Song of Songs actually a lesson in chastity? 
Yes, actually, despite the reputation of the book, there are strong statements about the beauty of reserving one's body for one's spouse alone. And uh, perhaps uh, one of the more significant lines is from chapter 4, verse 12, where Solomon is praising his bride, and he says, A garden locked is my sister, my bride, a garden locked, a fountain sealed. And that's referring to the fact that she hasn't had other persons enter her garden. She has kept her garden for her king and her bridegroom uh, alone. And that's beautiful, Anna, because this strengthens a marriage when that, uh, that physical intimacy is something that we have saved and, and only shared with that one person with whom we've made a lifelong covenant. And uh, so it's, it's really something precious, something that we want to help our children. We, you know, we need to educate them in uh, the value of this um, before they reach physical maturity for obvious reasons. And this helps to prepare them to really make a strong, lifelong bond with their spouse. Absolutely. I mean, I joke about the pickup lines, but you think about it, a lot of the, uh, I keep calling them pickup lines, but a lot of these lines actually uh, point to this idea that that you should respect the body of, of your spouse or your future spouse in this case as a temple of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. There's a famous passage in chapter 5 where the bride is describing the body of Solomon, and she starts at his head and works down to his feet. And what uh, scholars and rabbis and, you know, the fathers have noticed down through the ages is that the imagery that she uses in describing his body is all taken from the Jerusalem temple. Hmm. She's really describing his body as a temple, a sacred place. Of course, that reminds us of our Lord in um, uh, John 2.21, where he speaks of the temple of his body. And St. Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians 6.19, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So, yes, you know, it's, you know our, our culture gets it exactly wrong. They say that, oh, we, we Catholics think that sex is dirty or the body isn't worthy or something like that, which is precisely the opposite of what we do hold and believe which is that the body is holy, and the the union between a husband and wife, that too is a holy act. It's almost a liturgical act. And uh, and because of that, um, it needs to be respected and reserved and done at the proper time, etc., just as, you know, we celebrate a liturgy at the proper feast day, etc., according to the rubrics and so on. And so uh, we really do have the highest view of, of both the body and of physical union um, of any world religion and um, of any uh, world philosophy. And why is that? Because we understand as Catholics that this is our participation in creation. I mean, that's why we call it procreation. Absolutely. Made in the image and likeness of God. Just as God is creator, we are procreators. And, um, you know, one of, you know, Adam is made in God's image and likeness in Genesis 1, 26, and that gives him a priestly role. I think we've talked about that in the show. And when a man and a woman enter into marriage, they are, in a sense, ordained to handle uh, each other's bodies in a holy way, just as when you, we ordain a, a young priest— he is authorized and given a, a spiritual power to handle the body of the Lord, which is the Eucharist, of course, and uh, to uh, handle those Eucharistic elements and distribute them, etc., to the Bride of Christ, which is the Church. And so when man and woman uh, come to um, the celebration of matrimony, they likewise are ordained to handle each other's bodies in a way that's going to be life-giving and that is going to be worshipful, that's going to honor God. And uh, I think we need to recover that sense of uh, the, the holiness of husband and wife that enter into Catholic matrimony. 
Yeah, and get away from this idea that worship is reserved only for inside a church building, that that we are meant to worship God with our very lives and every aspect of our lives, including our marriages. I mean, this is a reason that marriage is, a, that matrimony is is a sacrament, right? I mean, one of the, there are many reasons, of course, but but one of them is that this requires the grace of God to be open to and take part in procreation. I mean, that's why the virtue of chastity and continence before marriage is so important. Yes. So we're set, we're ordained in matrimony to sanctify the temporal order. I mean, we, we talk about the priesthood of all believers, that every Catholic who's baptized, look at the Catechism 900 through 909, is empowered by Christ to share in his priesthood. That doesn't mean that we all have to become lectors or take roles in uh, the Eucharistic liturgy, when some people misunderstand it that way. But really, our priesthood as lay people is is out in the world. And, you know, there's nothing more fundamental to affecting our society than raising the next generation. And so we can think about husbands and wives as really being, in a sense, ordained as ministers of the church to go out into society and raise the next generation in a holy fashion. And that takes preparation, and that takes uh, guidance and formation. And um, so really, I need to take this seriously. This isn't like, oh, you didn't get a vocation to the priesthood or the religious life. So this second the second best uh, option right. is that you, know, you get married. Like, no. You're being you're being ordained to this special role of of making the world a holy place by raising the next generation that's going to govern the world. Absolutely, and to take it back to the Song of Songs um, can start with that wonder and awe um, at your spouse, at the the image of your spouse in the image and likeness of God. We've been talking to Dr. John Bergsma. You can read more in Love Basics for Catholics from Ave Maria Press and linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Dr. Bergsma, thank you. Absolutely. Always good to be with you. Likewise. All right. It's 16 past. We're back with headlines right after this. For over 500 years, the church-honored spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola have formed many saints. This treasured way of personal prayer with God is now available to you for free. Order your free training manual at lordteachmetopray.com and bring Ignatian prayer to others. Lord Teach Me to Pray is approved by the USCCB. Order your free training manual at lordteachmetopray.com. That's lordteachmetopray.com. Lord Teach Me to Pray underwrites the Sunrise Morning Show. Born from the heart of St. Daniel Comboni, the Comboni missionaries have served the poorest and most abandoned people in the world for more than 150 years. The Combonis improve quality of life with resources like food, clean water, and medicine. They provide vital education in schools and spiritually minister through the sacraments, all while preparing local Christian leaders to serve their people now and in the future. Find out more at ComboniMissionaries.org. It's the Easter season, and the Carmelite monks of Wyoming have special coffee blends in honor of the resurrection, including Easter sunrise. And when you purchase some after clicking the Mystic Monk coffee link at sunrisemorningshow.com, we earn a commission. While you're at our site, be sure to check out our online store to get a Sunrise Morning Show mug or travel mug. Support the Sunrise Morning Show while celebrating the rising of the Son of God with Easter sunrise blend. Do so at sunrisemorningshow.com. That's sonrisemorningshow.com. Each weekday, we'll dive into the timeless teachings of our Catholic faith, drawing upon the wisdom of the ages to navigate the challenges of today. Together, we'll seek truth, find inspiration, and forge a deeper connection with God. I'm Deacon Harold Burke Sivers, and I invite you to join me for Beacon of Truth, today at 4 p.m. Eastern on EWTN Radio. minutes past the hour. Here's Anna with headlines. Former President Trump told reporters in Georgia yesterday that he would not sign a national abortion ban into law if elected president. A storm system is expected to bring severe weather today to parts of the southeast and Ohio River Valley. In fact, the entire 
eastern part of the country will be hit with heavy rain today. And Pope Francis, during his general audience yesterday, said a Christian without courage is a useless Christian. News at the top and bottom of each hour every weekday morning here on the Sunrise Morning Show. And Anna, <clears throat> Anna Mitchell, uh, you and I get a lot of press releases. We people do. People saying, hey. And some of them uh, are from reputable Catholic mm-hmm. sources. Say, oh, boy. Hey, what did get you so get excited. in your inbox, Matt? Well, I'm, it, I, it, I'm not going to refer to anything specific. But I get a lot of these. I get on mm-hmm. a lot of just like general Christian living PR lists. And it is amazing <laughs> to me how many times a day I will get a release for a book or an author or a preacher who will say, this person has discovered the one secret to doing whatever to like completely overhaul your Christian life. Oh, and, right. you know, Catholics yeah. can kind of sometimes get into these things, too, if they say, oh, if you just did this one thing, mm-hmm. like, it would change everything. And, and sometimes that's true, but sometimes it's not. But there is a – there's very much like a magic bullet spirituality oh, that comes yeah. across in a lot of these press releases. And I don't know about you, but anybody who offers me like a magic bullet spirituality, I get a little nervous about because – I'm aware of the reality of what Christianity is. Mm-hmm. It's a lifelong grind. Yeah. So Constant I would just conversion. put it out there. If somebody's like, read this one book or do this one thing and it will solve all your problems forever. Like treating uh, Christianity like it's an energy drink or a dietary supplement. <laughs> Take this one thing. Never eat this one food again. Just be careful of that stuff. Because it's a grind. Day in, day out. Yep. yep. A joyful grind. Joyful grind. Absolutely. But a grind nonetheless. Go grind Don't let some people coffee. make money off your desperation. It's 21 past. Family, thank you for supporting Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. Yes, because of your generosity and from inviting many others to listen and give is why Sacred Heart Radio is now heard and seen on seven media platforms. Now, if you are a new listener, setting up a reoccurring gift of just $10 a month is easy to do at sacredheartradio.com and we'll assure that the gospel of Jesus Christ will always be broadcast on Sacred Heart Radio and the Sacred Heart Radio app. St. Michael's Rosaries and Religious Articles in Miamisburg carries many of the books heard on Sacred Heart Radio. Online at stmichaelscustomrosaries.com. That's stmichaelscustomrosaries.com. stmichaelscustomrosaries.com. Proud to support Sacred Heart Radio. I'm Guy. I'm Mara. And I'm Patrick. And we're the Cagney family with Coldwell Banker Realty. We support Sacred Heart Radio. And we help buyers and sellers trying to find their dream homes in Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, and Florida. 513-347-1888 to talk to the Cagney family. Good food can still be fast food. Bridgetown Finer Meats, a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio, has a convenient online store at BridgetownFinerMeats.com. They're all your favorite prepared foods like their delicious homemade soups, beef barbecue, chicken and stuffing, and sweet potato casserole, all available at a click of a button for same-day pickup. They also have high-quality fresh meats like pork, veal, chicken, beef, and seafood, and even produce. Fast, convenient shopping on the go at BridgetownFinerMeats.com. At times, life is overwhelming, making it hard to find peace and know God's love. Take a step out of life's busyness and into God's presence for an eight-day, personally directed retreat at the Jesuit Spiritual Center. Enter into silence to pray, reflect, and rest. Daily conversations with the spiritual director invite you to explore your own story and connect it to the life of Christ. For more information or to register, call 513-248-3500. That's 513-248-3500. It is time for Bible Foods with Rita Heikenfeld. And don't say we never tell you anything practical here on the Sunrise Morning Show because we're going to talk about buy before dates and sell before dates and use before dates. Because when you pick up a bag of salad at the grocery store and it tells you a couple of different dates, sometimes, I I don't know about you, I get a little nervous, Rita. I get confused too, so um, that's why we're going to talk about all these Best buy, sell by, use by dates. Indeed. And, you know, part of this, too, is being a good steward of the food in your own fridge, right? Because I bet you there's all kinds of us out there who have thrown out perfectly decent food Mm -hmm. because we were worried it was gone bad or because we weren't paying attention when we bought it and didn't check on it until it was too late. So what's the best buy 
date? Like, how w- w- how should we be thinking about the best buy date? Okay, when it says best buy date, Matt, that indicates when a, a food product will have the best flavor or quality, best flavor or quality. I always think of, like, fresh foods like meats and dairy. But it, what you just said is so true. Your best indications um, for any of those dates are your senses, looks, aroma, texture. Um, most of those foods um, would label with the best by date or okay if they're stored properly up to a week or so past the date. So, again, use your good senses. All right. So the sell-by date is where people get antsy. Uh, because the sell-by date, if I'm at the grocery store, and this happened to me the other day, and it was, I think, like the 7th of April, and mm-hmm. I looked at something that said, sell this by the 8th of April, I started to panic. I'm like, I don't know if I can eat this whole bag of salad, you know, this big old bin of, you know, mixed greens in the next day. <laughs> What's the sell-by date? Oh, and, you know, that's that's probably the most confused one, as you just said. Uh, sell-by dates, basically, Matt, these are grocery store-specific Um, And I say that because this date is how long the store can display the items on the shelves and up for sale, just like you said. It's not a safety date. Um, Again, you see this on perishables like what you just said, bag salads, meats, dairy, uh, breads, and fish products. So just pay attention and look at the quality. Again, your senses are your best judge there. All right. So... Uh, when you say the senses are the best judge, I imagine that's going to come into play a little bit when we get to uh, the real where the rubber hits the road question, which is the use by date, right? Oh, yeah. uh, or what we often refer to as the expiration date. Yeah. Um, so, how, what is uh, what is a good standard when it comes to these? What you, uh, again? What you just said. This is the last date that's recommended for the use to eat the product when it's at the best quality. And um, basically, again, you, that's when you're supposed to eat it. Not a safety date for most foods. So um, I always say if, if something's properly stored and handled, again, there's your senses using those as the best judgment. And a good example is milk. Now, you probably go through more than we do. Um, I use it a good week, at least, after the use-by date, even after it's open. But you can tell right away by the smell, don't you think, on milk? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And sometimes what will happen, too, is that uh, someone will put out the milk for a bowl of cereal, and I won't notice the milk didn't get put back until an hour or two later. (laughs) And it doesn't matter what the use-by date is. uh, That milk might not be good still by the use-by date. And, and you know, conversely, um, Rita, I've all the time gotten apples or potatoes or cheese where it says use-by this date and or – I mean, this happens actually a lot with, like, barbecue sauce or, like, hot Mm -hmm. sauce or something Mm -hmm. uh, where it'll say, use it by this date, and I won't even pay attention to it. And then, you know, months down the road, I'll be like, oh, I've been using this expired hot sauce for the past three months, (laughs) you know, but it's just fine. Well, yeah, and mustard's another good example. Even after you open it, if it's in the refrigerator, it stays good a long time. Um, And those things usually have a lot of acid in them, too, so um, it's preserved, like, with vinegar and stuff. And so, again, there you go, your, your good judgment. And popcorn, too. I just popped some yesterday. It had a best uh, used by, um, basically eat by date. It was two months ago, and it was just fine. So um, things like canned goods, like tomatoes, canned tomatoes, you know what? Don't, don't pitch those out right away. They should be good at least up to a year after the used by date. You know, looks and, um, again, use your senses. And if you're still confused, the FDA has a lot of good information on shelf-stable foods, so you can always check that site out as well. All right. So let's get uh, to some other things here. Uh, Pasta and uncooked grains, how long can those hang out in the pantry? Oh, up to two years, again, if stored properly. No worries there. I figured. uh, You know, there's no moisture to really make those things mold uh, the same way you would with with other things, but I bet you there's some people who still have some colored eggs laying around and are wondering, <laughs> are these okay to still eat? We're a few days out from Easter now. Yep. Um, basically, when you hard boil an egg and you put it in the fridge, it's okay to eat peeled or not um, up to a week or so. And, and I always say that's the cutoff date. Again, your senses, if it's not peeled, peel it, and you'll know. Um, but basically a week, that's my opinion. What do you think about that? That's probably about right, but I mm-hmm. want to know about uh, eggs that are in the carton that are not hard-boiled. Like a raw egg 
how uh, you've got a tip for 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 how we can figure out if that's a good egg or a bad egg as it were oh yeah because they stay good you can keep those up to over a month after you buy them basically put them in a, a glass of water a real fresh egg sinks all the way to the bottom and then as it ages it floats a little it's okay but if an egg floats all the way to the top no good all right good to know so that's uh that's that's some handy stuff right there uh, by the way, if you go to abouteating.com, read a site, you can find some uh, recipes, including one for a chunky tomato sauce mm. adapted from uh, a listener. And, uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, you can use tomato sauce on all kinds of stuff, everything from pizza to pasta and beyond. But, Rita, we've got abouteating.com linked at sunrisemorningshow.com, and I don't have to dunk you in the water. I know you're a good egg. <laughs> that's good. I'm glad you don't have to do that, Matt. I'll talk to you next week. All right. Again, you can find Rita linked at abouteating.com, linked through sunrisemorningshow.com. Half past the hour, here's Anna with news. Good morning. Former President Trump has said he would not sign a national abortion ban into law if elected president. Trump was asked by reporters in Georgia if he would sign a ban if Congress sent one to his desk. He said the overturning of Roe v. Wade was an incredible achievement, but says abortion laws should be left up to the states to decide. The Biden campaign and its allies, who have stated they believe their policy to expand abortion nationwide will be a winning issue in November, quickly attempted to dismiss Trump's comments and say that voters should support President Biden if they want to protect abortion rights. A storm system is expected to bring severe weather today to parts of the southeast and the Ohio River Valley. A risk of high wind and isolated tornadoes will stretch from the South Carolina-Georgia line down into Florida. The risk of tornadoes will be greater in eastern Ohio, West Virginia, and into parts of Pennsylvania. Heavy rain is expected in the region where water levels are already elevated. Meanwhile, tornadoes did did tear through Louisiana and Texas yesterday. In Lake Charles, Louisiana, a tornado was on the ground for a mile, while one in Port Arthur, Texas, carved a two-mile path of destruction. During his general audience yesterday, Pope Francis repeated his appeal for peace in the Holy Land, as well as for Ukraine and Myanmar. He said, let us ask the Lord for peace and not forget these brothers and sisters of ours who suffer so much in these places of war. He also asked the faithful to pray for the people of Kazakhstan who have been suffering from massive flooding lately. In his catechesis, the Holy Father reflected on the virtue of fortitude, saying, a Christian without courage is a useless Christian. From Vatican Radio, Deborah Castellano-Lubov reports. May the Lord and the saints' examples inspire us to rediscover fortitude. Pope Francis gave this encouragement during his weekly general audience on Wednesday in St. Peter's Square, saying that the virtue, with God's grace, will help us in our day-to-day efforts. The catechism describes the cardinal virtue of fortitude La fortezza. As the moral virtue that ensures firmness in difficulties and constancy in the pursuit of good. The Pope highlighted how the virtue can strengthen our resolve to resist temptations and to overcome obstacles. He said it enables one to conquer fear, even fear of death, and to face trials. A Christian without courage who does not turn his own strength to good, who does not bother anyone, Pope Francis said, is a useless Christian. È un cristiano inutile. The Pope addressed when fortitude is directed within ourselves. Most of the fears that arise within us, he observed, are unrealistic and do not end up happening anyway. It is better, then, he said, to invoke the Holy Spirit and face everything with patient fortitude, one problem at a time. The Pope said to the faithful, we are not alone. The Lord is with us. If we trust in him and sincerely seek the good, he reassured, then in every situation we can count on God's providence to shield and armor us. The Pope then pointed out the second, more active nature of fortitude. As well as internal trials, the Pope said there are external enemies, which he said are the trials of life, persecutions, and difficulties that we did not expect or that surprise us. Fortitude, he said, is a fundamental virtue because it takes the challenge of evil in the world seriously and makes us react and cry out. 
an emphatic no to all of this. No. I'm Deborah Castellano Lubov. A new report shows inflation does not appear to be going away anytime soon. Mark Mayfield reports. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that 12-month price growth accelerated from 3.2% in February to 3.5% in March. The report says items seeing the biggest increase include auto insurance, baby food and formula, and outpatient hospital services. Meanwhile, AAA says the average price for regular gas has gone up about 20 cents a gallon over the past month. Investors reacted negatively to the report, with stocks closing down sharply on Wall Street. I'm Mark Mayfield. Families and community members are remembering the victims of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse. A vigil was held at Sacred Heart of Jesus Church in Baltimore this week. Participants walked around the neighborhood holding candles and stopping six times, one for each victim, to say a prayer in their memory. The Archdiocese of Baltimore says it's raised more than $47,000 through its Francis Scott Key Bridge Relief Fund. That's the news. It's 35 minutes past the hour. Have you used our QR code to download the Sacred Heart Radio app? The app lets you hear Sacred Heart Radio from anywhere and gives you access to the Sunrise Morning Show and Driving Home the Faith podcast. To get the app, visit sacredheartradio.com and scan the QR code. Schneller Knockelman Plumbing, Heating, and Air are proud supporters of Sacred Heart Radio, home of the 100% satisfaction guarantee, because our work is done right the first time. For all your plumbing, heating, and air conditioning work, Find us at skpha.com, skpha.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Rose Automotive, serving the Hamilton area with a wide selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Rose Automotive, celebrating over 30 years of automotive excellence. On Erie Highway in Hamilton, roseautomotivegroup.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Rua Wood Psychological Services, integrating psychological science and the truths of our Catholic faith with offices in Dayton and Cincinnati. More information at 513-407-8878 or rwpsych.org. It's 24 minutes before the hour on this Thursday, April the 11th. Your forecast is brought to you on Sacred Heart Catholic Radio by Schneller Knockelman Plumbing, Heating, and Air online at skpha.com. More rain today, but warm. Right now, temperatures in the upper 50s as you're heading out the door. For Cincinnati, rain likely today with thunderstorms possible and a high of 65 degrees. Showers tonight and an overnight low of 47. More rain again tomorrow and a high of 55 degrees. For the Miami Valley Dayton area, rain this morning with thunderstorms developing this afternoon, a high around 67 degrees. Showers early, then cloudy overnight with a low of 47. Rain showers again tomorrow with increasing winds in the afternoon and a high tomorrow of 54 degrees. This is Sacred Heart Catholic Radio, 740 a.m., 910 a.m. Download our app at sacredheartradio.com. The Sunrise Morning Show continues. I'm Matt Swaim. It's always great to catch up with Gary Machuda from Hands On Apologetics. If you've never been to Gary's site and check out his stuff, do yourself a favor. There's just a, it's a treasure trove over there. Gary, good morning. Morning, Matt. So we've been going through your book, The Gospel Truth, and about the reliability of the scriptures. That's really the, the, the point of the book. Uh, you know, I was doing a, some more light reading this morning. I was looking at the dogmatic constitution on divine revelation from the Second Vatican Council. Uh, De Verbum, in which it says this, uh, and I quote in paragraph 11, the books of Scripture must be acknowledged as teaching solidly, faithfully, and without error that truth which God wanted to put into sacred writings for the sake of salvation. So that's what the Church says about the Bible. Does the Church make any similar statement about the writings of the Church Fathers? Are we in different territory there? Yeah, well, it, it it does in the sense that church documents would often appeal to the unanimous consent of the fathers. Uh, so, where scripture, you know, every verse, is, you know, every word of scripture being inspired by God, therefore, since God cannot deceive or be deceived, uh, the text of scripture cannot uh, be deceptive or have error. Uh, now. That might be true for every word of Scripture, but it's not true for every early church father. Some church fathers can make mistakes, and and some of them did make mistakes. But uh, as we've been pointing out throughout, you know, our discussions, 
is the point is that you're looking at the early church fathers in aggregate as a uh, sign of what Jesus handed on to the apostles. And so you kind of have to deal with them more as a group where individual fathers can make mistakes. Yeah, what you're really getting is <clears throat> sometimes what you get at Mass, right? Uh, when we pr- pronounce the Nicene Creed together as a community, one of us may be going too fast, another going too slow, another one might be using an old translation, another one might be doing a new translation, one person might like yawn during the middle of a phrase, but if you stand at the back of the church and you hear the whole group going, what you hear is the Nicene Creed, right? right. And so, right. I mean, in some sense, what you're hearing uh, in the Church Fathers is this um, sort of collective uh, thing that they're, the sum is greater than the than the individual parts. Right, exactly. Or, you know, like eyewitness testimony, you might have three people accurately describing the same event, but they might use different words or descriptions. You know, they, they won't be locked up. And, uh, and you might even have a witness or two that gets things wrong. But when you look at them in aggregate, you can, you can sort out the truth from the falsehood and determine you know, what exactly happened. So here's where it also gets kind of crazy is because some of these church fathers are in total consensus on some things, but sometimes they actually write letters disagreeing with each other. (laughs) So what are we supposed to make of that? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, well, you know, there's a couple of things you need to do. First, you you need to ask yourself, are they talking about something that is part of the deposit of faith, or are they arguing about how they would prefer to interpret particular scripture or how a particular thing should be applied in each situation, you know, uh, because then you'd have a diversity of opinions that, you know, fathers could disagree and even vehemently disagree with each other. But when it comes to, to doctrine where they're, they're uh, passing on something that is of the faith, uh, what you'll see is a consensus. So here's something else that happens uh, in the fathers, and I wonder if you could maybe speak to this uh, a little bit, because this is where— things can really break down in debate with someone who will say X doctrine or concept did not exist in the early church. You can't find it in the church fathers anywhere. You don't find the Trinity talked about, for example, uh, for the first couple hundred years of the church. So this is something that they made up along the way. Uh, what, What would you say to somebody who expects to find all these things in their current form using current terminology in the church fathers what would you say to somebody who who maybe is getting attacked and they're like well i want to say it's there but it's not there yeah yeah well that's because uh you know it takes a while to develop ter- uh you know uh terms uh definitions things like that but the concepts are there and that's really what's important uh, like you mentioned with the trinity you know the trinity was believed you know from uh, new, you see this in the New Testament you see elements even in the Old Testament, um, but it, it takes a while to develop and be defined. There has to be people that uh, explain things wrong that can be condemned, and uh, usually when the church condemns a particular proposition as being contrary to the beliefs of the church, usually that's when terms become defined. You know, uh, so yeah, you, you don't find like a formal explicit. Uh, mentions of terminology like the Trinity till later on, but that doesn't mean that the, the belief didn't exist prior to that we start seeing these terms. In fact, you, you, see, you see beliefs in the Trinity going all the way back. So here's another thing that, that I sometimes encounter, uh, is someone will see something in the Church Fathers that they disagree with, or maybe that is even a mistake in the Church Fathers. Uh, and they will say, well, this is why we can't trust anything but the Scriptures. Why is that a wrong approach to take here? Why we we can't uh, trust anything but the Scriptures? Right. If they okay. see, like, any mistake in the Church Fathers or any anything they disagree <laughs> with in the Church Fathers, because to, 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 I see people dismiss the early Church as a complete whole, as to say, well, we can't really know anything except for what's in the Scriptures. Yeah. Well, uh, that's uh, again, that kind of pits two things that are— shouldn't be put against each other. You know, uh, you're reading Dei Verbum. Dei Verbum talks about how God's Word comes to us, you know, both uh, in writing and um, outside of writing, in sacred tradition. And they, they both merge together, 
and uh, they, they form a whole. So just as uh, Scripture can be, and we can interpret Scripture in light of the beliefs of the, the early church that because they had these uh, teachings handed on by the apostles, and likewise the Scriptures are helpful for us to understand the teachings of the early church fathers to discern you know, what is part of the positive faith, what isn't. So you, yeah. you can't really, it's not a, a one against the other, it's really a both and. Well, and what I also find, Gary, is that people who try to make that argument that you can't trust the early church are are usually saying also implicitly, but you can trust me, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? As if to say, uh, these people who are around and breathing the air that the apostles breathed and learning from the people who learned at the feet of the apostles are probably not trustworthy sources. But me, who was born 45 years ago, me you can trust me you can trust reading these things in translation or translating them on the fly after a couple of years of greek and seminary i i'm the one you can trust and that's i think where the where the real conceit comes in but i don't think people realize the conceit that that is but it is i mean it's a kind of a conceit yeah yeah exactly and i think that's why uh many non-catholics don't you know view the early church fathers as particularly helpful because they're thinking well, these are just like my pastor, you know, it's just they, they lived, uh, you know, hundreds, maybe even over a millennium, you know, earlier. But, you know, the value of the early church fathers isn't so much in their particular genius of concocting or, or formulating things, I should say, but rather the, the genius of the early church fathers is that they are witnesses of the common faith that was handed out. And, you know, like you said, you could... You know, with your English translation, come up with all sorts of really interesting interpretations. But the bottom line is, what, is that interpretation in line with what Jesus and the apostles handed on? Yeah, is it the faith uh, that the apostles evangelized, and is it the faith exhibited in the people that the apostles evangelized? Good stuff. We've got Gary's book, The Gospel Truth, linked at sunrisemorningshow.com, along with his website, Hands On Apologetics. Thanks, Gary. Have a great day. Thanks. You too, Matt. 14 till back after this. Support for the Sunrise Morning Show is from Visiting Angels. Visiting Angels provides experienced, compassionate care to millions of aging adults nationwide by keeping them safe and healthy in the comfort of their own home. Whether it's a short break for caregivers or for long-term assistance, Visiting Angels provides hygiene, meals, light housework, companionship, and more. And services are available up to 24 hours per day. Visiting Angels, online at visitingangels.com. That's visitingangels.com. Franchise opportunities available. Are you longing to hear God's voice? Lord, teach me to pray. The free Ignatian prayer series will open your heart to his voice, to the peace you're seeking, and the only love that fulfills the human heart, Jesus. God is calling you to true joy by knowing Jesus personally. Lord Teach Me to Pray is free. Just go to lordteachmetopray.com and click on the red box and order the Lord Teach Me to Pray series. Again, that's lordteachmetopray.com. Have you subscribed to get the Sunrise Morning Show show notes? When you subscribe, the show notes arrive in your inbox weekday mornings with the list of featured guests, books, articles, and websites we'll discuss. And then you'll also get the podcast with markers to quickly find and hear an interview again or to see the Sunrise Morning Show on video. So to know when your favorite guests are on, go to sunrisemorningshow.com and click subscribe. The most original Catholic content is on EWTN Radio. On Mother Angelica Answering the Call, Father Joseph and Doug Keck mine decades of phone calls answered by Mother Angelica. No subject is off limits and no problem too big for the wisdom and compassion of the one and only Mother Angelica. Mother Angelica Answering the Call, Sunday afternoon, 2 Eastern on EWTN Radio. Have you had any embarrassing moments? That's later on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie on most of these EWTN stations. Now back to the Sunrise Morning Show with Anna Mitchell and Matt Swaim. Back with us on the Sunrise Morning Show is Dr. Jeffrey Morrow. He's here for our weekly Old Testament Bible study using a Catholic guide to the Old Testament. He's one of the contributors to it. Dr. Morrow, welcome back. 
It's great to be here. It is great to have you. And we are talking about the book of the prophet Obadiah today. Everybody's favorite prophet, right? Oh, wait. <laughs> Who was Obadiah? (laughs) Right. We're actually not 100% sure, right? So Obadiah is the shortest book of all the prophets. It's only 21 verses. I mean, we don't really know much about about him, um, like the the prophet Joel. But if if he is the same Obadiah during um, the time of the prophet Elijah, which some people believe, right, uh, from 1 Kings, Mm. and then he would fit that kind of time period. But we're just not sure. His prophets, prophecies don't match that very well um but we just we just not really sure we don't know a whole lot about him what does obadiah mean literally in, in the hebrew it's like servant of of the lord servant of mm. yahweh right yeah. Ed, ebed right you know servant and then Daiya from yahweh or whatever so it would be usually it's translated servant of yahweh servant of the lord it's a good name for a prophet don't you think Sure, definitely. <laughs> so as you were saying, this book is all of 21 verses. I mean, honestly, if you're paging through the Old Testament, you probably skip Obadiah just on <laughs> accident. It's that easy to miss. Um, I held up my Bible just a second ago. I'll hold it up again for our video participants. It's really just a page and a half in the Bible. Um, so the opening lines say this. Dr. Morrow, it says, the vision of Obadiah, thus says the Lord God concerning Edom. Yes. Who or what is Edom? Oh, that's a great question. So Edom, these are, this is the Edomites, which was an enemy of Old Testament Israel, but actually they go back to the book of Genesis. So if you look through the people, the people groups, almost all of them, if not all of them, are linked with a father figure. So Israel, our Israelites are named after Israel, whose first name was Jacob. Mm-hmm. And um, his he had a brother, and his brother was named Esau, who you hear about here as well. The both names are used interchangeably in Obadiah. Esau's name is also Edom. Esau because he was hairy, Edom because he was red, hmm. red hair. <laughs> and so Edom is is a son of Isaac. He's, a, he's Jacob's brother. And they had this big, so they had this feud between Edom, Esau, and Jacob, Israel, in Genesis. Remember, he has to leave because he gets the birthright, and he comes back. Um, And so those people groups also are in conflict historically in in the Old Testament in that time period. And so now Obadiah is going after the Edomites. He is explaining, this is kind of a beautiful book in the sense that, you know, we're frustrated with, you know, the, you know, the, um, the people who harm us, that sort of thing. Well, in a sense, the Edomites now are going to get, they're going to be in trouble finally because they've been taking advantage of Judah, the people of God. And so this is, in a sense, the message is this is God's promise of vindication for his people, which in reality might not happen in our time, but it happens in heaven. Actually, I like to think about it a little bit of a tangent, but when you go through all these prophets as a whole, if you don't just read the message individually, but you read them as a whole, it's really quite beautiful um, because you see, on the one hand, God calls his people Israel to follow him. The people are all called to follow him, but they all go astray. So he calls one people to follow him, and yet they go astray too, right? And then the people are right. oppressing them, and God uses this for Israel's purification. And then there's a civil war, right, basically, in north and south of Israel split, so the people of God split. And God is continually calling them back. And so the nations get punished, north gets punished, the south gets punished, and in the end there's this promise of reunification of all. There will be, you know, punishment for for all, but the faithful of the south get united with the northern Israel and with the ingathering of the Gentiles. And so everybody, in the end, this kind of points forward to the coming of Christ, where he's come to reunite not just Israel— but the Gentiles as well. That's not exactly what Obadiah is doing. Obadiah is focusing on that one part of the vindication of God's people. But I think it's just helpful to keep that overarching vision in mind. Yeah, that's a, a really important overarching vision to know as as we read through the prophets. So I'm glad you did that. Can you give us, I mean, it's. I, I'm assuming this is not going to take you very long. Can you give us a basic outline of the book of Obadiah? Sure. Yeah, I mean, we're just going to divide up into a few verses. Um, first, you know, roughly nine or so verses, you have this judgment, right? Judgments. Edom is going to be judged, okay? and, they're going to, and they're going to be found wanting, right? So sometimes this is called Edom, Esau. 
And the next couple of verses, maybe 11 to 14 roughly, are on Mount Esau, Edom, right? It's not really, there's no Mount Esau, but that's the sure. idea, right? And this is going to be, they've, they've, they've been oppressing the people of God in Zion, in, in, Ju- in Jerusalem, Judah. And then the, la- the next section maybe is about the day of the Lord coming to judge the nations. So it's not just Edom, really, it's all the nations who have treated Israel, the people of God, the way that Edom has. Um, and then, but then the end is the salvation for the people, for the people, right? Saviors will, shall go up to Mount Zion to rule Mount Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Mm. And the idea is this is the coming of the kingdom of God, which, as we know from the other prophets, will include these Gentiles, will include everybody. In Jesus' day, they're not just looking, you know, the Babylonian exiles ended, but what about the Assyrian exile? Where are the northerners? And the Samaritans, who are their descendants, they start to follow Jesus, at least some of them do. Then you have these Romans and the Greeks, they start to follow Jesus. So this salvation of the Lord, the salvation with the Savior's coming to Mount Zion, this is more than just to save Judah. It really extends to the nations, into the world, even though we don't have that right here. I just The ending is very hopeful. Yeah. It's about the vindication of God and His salvation. Absolutely. And so to close us out, um, can you talk about that phrase? You mentioned it uh, just very briefly, the day of the Lord. Um, I, I mean, it shows up a couple of times here in Obadiah, but it's it's one of those phrases that we see in in a lot of the prophets so probably an important phrase for us to keep in mind when we see on the day of the lord or on that day can you talk about that sure so this is tricky because i think it's context bound it's going to be used differently in different prophets yeah so i would say that sometimes the day of the lord and also it might have multiple levels of meaning but sometimes what the day of the lord is talking about in its most literal sense right is this kind of physical day of justice that you might have, you know, the day of the Lord, day of judgments, right? And so when, you know, the Babylonians are coming in, this is the day of the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, In this context, when Edom gets destroyed, this is the day of the Lord. But they're pointing forward to something much more, you know, I would say typological towards the New Testament. It's the coming of Christ, right? But even there, there's more than that, because like in Malachi and elsewhere, you have this idea of the day of the Lord that's refining and purifying and a lot of times this is this is our moment of death where we're 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 before God and we have our wow. private judgments, you know, where we're now this is truly the day of the Lord for me. And sometimes people will talk about it um, as, you know, the purification, so maybe purgatory for those of us who need it. Or the final judgment, you know, the final public judgment. So it, it's used in all of these different ways. Sometimes it it might be used for the destruction of the temple both with Babylon, but then also perhaps when the Romans do so, right, in the second time. So it can be used in, I think, a variety of different ways, depending on which prophet we're dealing with. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Jeffrey Morrow. You can find A Catholic Guide to the Old Testament linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. That'll do it for this national edition of the Sunrise Morning Show. I'm Anna Mitchell. May God bless you and keep you and grant you his peace. I'm Father Rob Jack. Join me this afternoon for Driving Home the Faith, when Francis Mayer will discuss his new book of interviews entitled True Confessions. Dr. Jennifer Roback Morris will share the latest news from the Ruth Institute. I'll continue my explanation of the church's new document on human dignity, the frequent traffic and weather. That's this afternoon beginning at 4 on Sacred Heart Radio. You're on the road to Christ the King. I am Deacon Mike Erb with Coldwell Banker Realty, proud to support Sacred Heart Radio because I am a faithful listener, and I'm happy to help you with buying or selling your home. 513-237-8888. That's 513-237-8888. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Honda East, the place to find a brand new Honda or pre-owned vehicle with no haggle, no hassle pricing. Honda East, just off I-275 on Beachmont Avenue. Help me, Honda East, get the car that I want. Online at HondaEastCincy.com. I'm Bill Torbeck of Tri-State Abrasive and Tool Company, proud to support Sacred Heart Radio. We strive to provide the highest quality diamond and CBN products manufactured by privately owned companies, enabling us to provide prompt and personal service and you to avoid the unnecessary cost and frustrations of dealing with bureaucracies. Find us online at theabrasiveone.com. That's the number one, theabrasiveone.com, theabrasiveone.com.
Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Fred Espenchide Plumbing. For plumbing and remodeling, Fred brings 55 years of experience to his work. Licensed in Ohio and Kentucky. Fred Espenchide, your pro-life plumber. 859-441-0950. 859-441-0950. Hi, I'm Anna Mitchell, MC for Heartbeats for Life 5K, sponsored by Cincinnati Right to Life. Saturday, April 20th at Lunkin Airport Playfield. It's a day of food, family, and fun to keep hearts beating in Ohio. Register at CincinnatiRightToLife.org. Central Fabricators, proud supporters of Sacred Heart Radio, custom builds and repairs corrosion-resistant storage tanks, reactors, and pressure vessels. These are used to manufacture liquids used in everyday products like health and beauty aids, pharmaceuticals, and food. Central Fabricators uses the latest in technology and modern equipment to deliver quality products, and big orders are not a problem. Central Fabricators, ASME certified, and on the web at centralfabricators.com. That's centralfabricators.com. Support for Sacred Art Radio is from Molly Maid of Westchester. Insured, screened, and drug-free employees deliver service with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. 1-800-MOLLY-MAID or at mollymaid.com. Molly Maid, a clean you can trust. This is Father Benedict O'Kinsla, the pastor of Our Lady of Victory in Delhi. Thank you for listening to Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. 740 WNOP Newport, 910 WPFB Middletown, or get the app, stream, podcast, and more at sacredheartradio.com. Arise, it's a new day. Hear his word, let us pray. The sunrise morning show. 